All right. Now, one of the questions that we had was, um, so sort of what typical behaviors can the average home owner change to make a positive impact on their energy consumption? So what simple things do you usually see that people can do that they don't aren't already doing? Well, uh, one of the things that you and I were doing while we were here today is turning off lights when you don't need them. Right. That's easy such an thing. Easy thing to do. Right. And also uh, replacing incandescent light bulbs with the compact fluorescent bulbs is, a, is an easy thing to do too. Um, the other thing is to uh, moderate the temperatures that you feel that you're comfortable mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. during the air conditioning season. Um, if you've been used to 73 degrees, try to get used to 74 degrees. Right. You know, little incremental changes can in the long run save you a lot of money. You mentioned the programmable thermostat. That's something that's fairly inexpensive that you can get that can make a big difference. Yeah, and and um, I hope I don't get any licensed electricians to throw spears <laughs> at me. I don't think they will. Most people can do that themselves. It's not all yep. that difficult. Yep. And again, the key thing with a programmable thermostat is to use it properly. Right. If you use it properly, uh, you can save when when you're operating on a fossil fuel system whether it's natural gas or propane or oil, uh, you can save minimally 20% a year wow. on your fuel bills. Wow. Yeah, it can be significant. How, um, how often would you recommend people get a home energy audit? Um, is it something that you should do mm -hmm. once or more than I, once? You know, that's, that's not a how high is up question. It's a good question. But it really has a lot to do with the age of the house. Really? Okay. Um, and frankly, whenever I'm going to do a, uh, an energy survey, I will never do an energy survey without talking to the clients first right. and finding out what their issues are. Right. Uh, because those are the things that we want to try to do and to uh, then create priorities for them so that they know where they're going to get the biggest return on their money spent and make the, the largest changes in um, energy saving for the least amount of money spent. Right. Do you find, um, once you give the results, what kinds of savings do people usually see, if any at all, um, based oh, on yeah, feedback? Huge, huge range. Yeah. Uh, depends on, um, in many of the uh, older homes that we look at that have attics where nobody has, has even stuck a head up in there or any other parts of their body in untold number of years. Right. Um, adding a attic insulation properly, uh, again, can be a, a huge energy saver. Right. Uh, lots of times we have folks that, uh, that try to do them, those things themselves, which is fine and dandy if they know what they're doing. Right. But it's, it's, it's something you would recommend getting help with just to do it properly. Depending Once on what again, the situation it is. On the right. I don't right. like to make glitter and generalities when right. it comes to that. Right. Because in a particular home, um, uh, given what the abilities of a particular homeowner might be, um, what I'm going to recommend to them is probably going to be partially dependent upon what what they would like to do themselves. Right. What are some of the typical steps of a home energy audit? And what are you, when you, obviously I've seen what you've done today, but what, you know, is there a sequence that you follow or does it just depend on the home? Um, what do you usually well, do? Well, again, you... uh, it's a little repetitious, but we always want to find out what the, what the homeowners right. consider to be their issues. They live there. They know far better than we do when right. we come in. Um, and sometimes we can find things very quickly. Right. Um, I had mentioned... Uh, to, to your husband, the, the leakage uh, around uh, the, the furnace or in, in the case of uh, a heat pump, we generally call those things uh, a fan coil unit. Uh, those can be very significant. We find air duct leakages that run anywhere from 10 to 40 percent. Wow. Uh, so yeah, that can be really huge. Um, 
I just came from a house last week where actually I, I did a home inspection, but I told them they had so much uh, leakage of air-conditioned air up in an unconditioned attic space that uh, I thought it was very important that that's something that they take care of the sooner the better. Right. Because they, it, in, in fact, it was trying to air condition the attic space. Oh, wow. So you can imagine the energy loss there. Right. It's substantial. Right. Are there any other things you might want to just tell the general public about, um, you know, what, what you see in your business and tips that you can give, little tips on common things, common errors people make in terms of um, wasting energy at home. I know you mentioned just simple things like turning down your air conditioning a little bit when you're at, when you're at home or letting it, uh, changing the CF to CFLs and other small things, but are there other, you know, little things that you think help? Like, I know ceiling fans, I know, can really help with air airflow circulation. And, um, yeah, but then it depends on where those ceiling fans are, right. too, and what kind of ceiling height you have and right. all those other variables. Um, ceiling fans can be very useful. Yep. Ceiling fans can also be uh, exceedingly energy inefficient. Right. If you find how they're used. Right. So just depends on the situation. Uh, yeah, you really have to know the specifics. Yep. Okay. Uh, in your instance here, where you've got a ceiling fan uh, up in the uh, on the third floor right. with the cathedral ceiling, that's a perfect place to have a ceiling fan. Okay. Uh, and that can be very useful. The thermal blinds, do you find that those are helpful? Because we've heard that those are helpful. To, we have those upstairs on the third floor. But um, I've heard that those can be kind of helpful in, in rooms just to kind of keep the uh, cool in or the heat in when needed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. That's why it's uh, very difficult to do something like this in a very abbreviated right. kind of fashion. Right. Because there are a number of things that are available these days uh, to help people with energy efficiency in their home. Great. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Pete, for your for your help and oh, sure. Great.